my achievements. It has been a hell of a week. Like, it has been a busy slash rough week, but it wasn't necessarily bad, but it did have its bumps. And I gotta talk about it before I get into anything. Actually, no, before I go any further. How's your day been? How's your week been? Has it been good? How's your exams going on? Because I know some of you achievements were saying that uh, last week was exam week and this week is exam week for some of you. How are you all doing? Did you think you passed? Let me know in the comments below. But talking about what happened to me this past week, and some of you might actually already kind of be aware I tweeted this on Twitter a little bit, and some of you might see, some of you might not follow me on Twitter, so you might not have seen, but pretty much, I discovered that one of my walls had water damage. Like, the water damage was so bad, when I put my hand up against the wall, my hand could go through the fucking wall. It, it, it was that bad. And I don't know how it wasn't noticed before, but I found it, discovered it, and it was pretty fucking bad. And the reason how I noticed it was because it was raining last week. And I noticed the wall had like this weird look. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I touched it and I was like, oh my god. So as soon as that happened, it was like kind of a couple hours, maybe a day or so after the vlog I uploaded. It was around like Tuesday or Wednesday. And I was like, oh my god. So I got my dad. I called my dad and all that because he has a lot more experience with this type of stuff than I do when it comes to, you know, walls, putting in walls and fixing stuff. But that wasn't the main issue, the real reason why I actually called him over. That was one of them. But the second one was when we opened up the wall. Listen to this. When I opened up the wall, the electrical was fucking... It's just, it's bad. It was so bad. It was falling apart. That's how bad the electrical was. So we had to fix the electric in the house. We, we had to fix it where that wall was in that room. It was fucking rough. It was such a rough time getting all that fixed, putting the wall up and all that. It's been a hell of a week. Been working on it all week. But then, that's not where the story just ends. Listen to this. After everything is good and fine with the wall and the electric and stuff, then something happened just today. Like, it was crazy. So I'm sitting here chilling at the house and all that. I'm just, you know, working on the vlog and stuff. And I get told by my daddy, he tells me, hey, I need your help with a tire. I, I need you to get, you know, get over here, help me with the tire because, you know, I almost got in a wreck. And I, I was worried because, as I said, a couple of months back, my stepmom got in a wreck and, you know, she's kind of been in a wheelchair. And I was worried. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, Dad, are you OK? And all that. I was asking. He's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just I need your help with, you know, the tire because the tire pretty much popped on me. And it had like a screw in it and it popped out and it made it flat and he was skidding across the road, which was very bad. It was really fucking bad because from what we I saw the tire, it was fucked up because the screw had this big leak in it and it was completely flat. And what my dad said and described to me was that when he was driving and he was hooking the turn left, his entire back end where the back left tire was, the pop tire, it popped and as he was turning, he actually started sliding sideways. And here's the thing that I got scared about when I found out how lucky he was. He told me that a vehicle was coming, okay, straight towards him, like, you know, oncoming traffic and then, you know, the traffic beside him. And you had it to where a car was right beside him, okay, going and he's right beside it. And then he had a car coming this way. And as he was t hooking a left, okay, and the car is off in the distance, he's hooking a left, he actually starts spinning and rotating around as he's hooking a left. And he's literally about to get smacked sideways from both sides, from the car that was beside him, and then the car that's coming from the other lane was about to slam him in the sides. And that would have been bad. Thankfully, here's the thing. My dad actually pressed the reverse, like he hit the reverse, and he went completely backwards, and he managed to save himself and save the damage to the car. Like, the car wasn't even damaged at all, just the fucking tire. So, thankfully, my dad is okay. It was a... I was worried. I was fucking shit in a brick today when I found out. I was like, oh my god, are you okay? And when I found out, had to help him with the tire, get it all fixed up and stuff. But it was a pretty scary day for me. I, I'm, I was nervous, but everything's fine now. Just FYI, my dad's fine. Everything's good. It just, he almost got in a freaking wreck. If he didn't hit reverse at that last second, he would have got slammed by two fucking cars on both sides. So, damn. I'm just glad he's okay, but... It's just kind of crazy, man. It's really crazy how fucking tires can just get screws and shit in and it fucks it up that bad. Just always check your tires. I mean, seriously. Always check your damn tires. So anyways, besides that, enough of that. Let, let's talk about other things. So anyways, you probably all kind of realized that the uh, weekly Q&A wasn't up last weekend. 
I want to explain, the reason why it was not up was actually because of the wall stuff and the electrical. I was so busy last week, that's also why the reviews were up around like 7 o'clock in the day and stuff. It was because I was working on the wall and electric and stuff. I was very busy and I did not have the time to upload them early morning because that's all I was doing. I was working on it. So that that's kind of the reason why. So please forgive me for the Q&A being late last week or not even being last week. I want to I wanna try to make it up to you, Chibits. I want to actually probably do 30 questions instead of 15 questions this time just to make up for missing last week and then you know doing this week so i'll put both of them together and add extra set of questions so that's probably what i'll do this week so leave me some questions in the comments below i'll look through them choose about you know 15 to 30 and then there we go so the next thing to move into is that overall besides all the crazy shit that went down like the walls fine the electrics fine but dad say thank god everything is pretty much normal it was a good week besides that i mean a couple games came out yesterday you had it to where overwatch came out played a little bit of that that was it was kind of fun it, it was a little bit fun I, i'm kind of upset that it's very similar to the beta i was playing it. It, it it's so similar to the beta because there's like nothing added new at all and i know they unlocked all the characters and stuff when it came to overwatch in the beta just to freaking get a feel for what the full game is like but the only thing i feel like overwatch is lacking right now is game modes or maps in general May and you know what no not maps it's just lacking game modes i just feel like there's not enough core content to really keep people busy and it's not like it's a moba that's very complex or something maybe like league of legends or smite it's not something that you can constantly dive into and you know do the same map over and over but there's so many different characters along with these different complex different builds you can do that it makes it entertaining almost endless fun but overwatch is not that type of game for what i played it could get re relatively very repetitive over time especially because i played the shit out of the beta I, I went really far into the beta put a lot of hours into it and now seeing that the main game is pretty much the same thing i don't think i'm going to be playing the actual main overwatch game as much as i did the beta because it's pretty much the exact same thing until they probably add in some dlc or you know some new game modes and stuff I'm probably going to not play that as much. Now, speaking of other games I've been playing, I played Ark a little bit, and oh my god, I got fucking destroyed. My tribe just got <laughs> fucking neck slit right there, just fucking dead when I got onto the new map center. So it kind of fucked me over. I got a little bit depressed on that, put a couple hours into it, fucking just got slaughtered, my, my neck slit on the game. And then, besides that, however, I've been watching House of Cards. Finished House of Cards, by the way. Oh my god, House of Cards, that fucking fucking cliffhanger dude of house of cards is a piece of shit oh my god i need i need the continuation of that and then another series which i want to talk about game of thrones oh. i kind of spoil don't worry I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil but that game of thrones oh my god that latest fucking episode holy shit Cheebits, if you want to talk about Game of Thrones in the comments below, please put a spoiler warning for fellow Cheebits, because I don't want them being spoiled at all when they start doing, you know, their questions, like the Cheebit questions. I don't want them being spoiled. So, if you're going to talk about Game of Thrones, please, I beg of you, please put spoiler alert for Game of Thrones or something. But damn, that ending of the latest episode of Game of Thrones was fucking insane. Definitely one of my personal favorite scenes or episodes in general of Game of Thrones. It was a, definitely a good moment of the series. Sad moment, but a very good moment. I, I just love the writing of that scene and the foreshadowing and the build-up to it. It was such a good scene when it came to Game of Thrones. So, yeah, definitely the best episode yet of the latest season of Game of Thrones, too. Hands down. Easy. So, I haven't watched Fear of the Walking Dead yet, actually. I haven't seen the latest episode yet, which I need to. I have it on DVR. I need to... You know, fucking watch that. I, I need to see the latest episode. I don't know why I watched it yet. So I've been re relatively busy today, stressing out and shit, fixing tire and stuff. So didn't have the time and didn't have the time Monday because I was busy too. And so, yeah. Anyways, talking about other things, hopefully all of you, you know, didn't already end the video and stuff because I haven't even gotten to the fan mail and stuff. It's just I've been talking about some of the crazy things that happened this week. And hopefully some of you might find that a little bit interesting. So, yeah, hopefully all of you had a very good week. Hopefully you didn't have a chaotic week like I did. Hopefully everybody was chill, calm, and you passed your exams to where you're going to, you know, get your degrees and stuff like that. I wish all of you Cheebits, you know, great luck on your degrees and, you know, your exams and stuff to get, you know, A's and stuff. Well, now, what a thing to start. So, Food Wars, Volume 9. Got a cute little bookmark, too. There is no letter in it, but what a way to start a fan mail opening. Food Wars, Volume 9. 
I still need to catch up with this series. I do. I need to completely catch up. And oh yeah, I know many are going to be asking me how's the Gintama and stuff doing because I said I would do it last week. But as I've already said, my fucking wall and shit and electrical and the tire, you know, today and stuff, it's been relatively busy. So I haven't had the time to finish catching up. Please forgive me on that. I really am fucking sorry. I am seriously sorry on that. But I will try to get it up very, 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 very soon. Um, my plan, my goal here is to get the Gintama video out this week. That That's my goal. I'm gonna try, but don't, you know, completely, you know, you know, put your full hope on that. I'm just saying. I'm gonna try my damn hardest to get that Gintama video out this week, and then also attack on Titan, too, because I need to do that as well. So, please forgive me for not having it up last week. I know many are gonna ask me, have I caught up yet? I'm only a couple of chapters away from catching up completely, so don't worry about that. So, Food Wars, talking about this, back to the, you know, what was just sent. So, Season 2 is coming out soon. I, I can't wait. The reason why I haven't actually completely caught up with Food Wars, you know, the manga, is because the anime was so fucking wonderful. I love the anime, and I've been waiting for Season 2. Since it was announced, I decided to just put the manga to the side and wait for the Season 2 of the anime, because like I did with JoJo Part 4, I read the beginning part of JoJo Part 4, but then, you know, Part 4 was announced. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just wait for the anime, because I like watching anime over reading manga. I mean, I love reading manga, just I love seeing it visually. Like, hearing the voice acting the music and stuff if it's done right of course if it's butchered and shit I'd rather read the manga and read the light novel but i mean if it's done properly i rather watch it and food wars was done properly to my personal awareness like i i think it was done right so i'm excited to see season two of food wars finally animated so that's kind of why i haven't actually caught up completely yet so please forgive me on that to chibi ollie hope you are well Hi Chibi, today I want to talk a bit about myself. Who am I? This is the absolute aggravating thing to answer. I will not give facts in my life, but instead talk a bit how I felt as a child and how I feel today. When I was a child, I was a quiet one, loved a lot of things, and my first and happiest memories of my childhood is when I held my little sister. This was not the first time I held her, but that this was the first time I felt the life that I can call a part of me. All of this who have... All of us who have siblings understand that they make up a good chunk of what we call ourselves. Trust me, no one gets on my nerves more than her, but I love her to the point that I feel my heart will break. I was a real scaredy cat. The dark was terrifying to me. I felt like I would get eaten up, that the demons I call myself would swallow me up. But then I realized that if I laughed at them, they have no sway over me. My first real confrontation with life and death was when my grandfather left the world. I don't remember a lot, but I do remember his kind hands and warm soul. That was the first time I accepted the end of all of who I love will come and my own. Is your mother still filled with spawn? Oh yeah, she's doing a whole lot better. She's still in the wheelchair, but she's doing so much better. I mean, she will have to have surgery very soon once again to get some of the rods placed back in. More rods, actually. But overall, she is doing much better than she did. She has color in her face. She's more energetic. It makes me happy to see her like that. So she's doing relatively good for the most part. I've been well. I spent a lot of my time analyzing anime and posting it on Anime Amino. Hope you like your gifts. Thank you very much, Ollie. Thank you so much. So, this right here is what Ollie sent. He sent No Game, No Life. Oh shit, the light novel of No Game, No Life. Volume 1 right here. And then, let's see. No Game, No Life manga, that's what he sent here, volume 1. Oh my god, we need a season 2 of this series. And then he sent, I think, yeah, he sent uh, volume 2 of the light novel of No Game, No Life. Best girl right there, fucking best girl, by the way. But No Game, No Life volume 2, I haven't read volume 2, which I need to read volume 2. That would be very interesting. And then, let's see, volume 3 and 4 of... The, I'm assuming manga? No, oh shit. That's the uh, light novel. Volume 3 of the light. Damn, I got a lot of content to read then. Volume 3 of the light novel. Badass cover, by the way. And I'm assuming this is new content we have not seen for uh, No Game No Light. Volume 4 light novel. They already got four volumes out for the light novels or more? Holy shit. It's crazy how many volumes come out now. The Empress is really starting to crank out these volumes a lot faster. I remember back in 2009 and 10 when I was really starting to collect a lot of manga volumes and light novels. 
I was constantly waiting on Spice and Wolf to come out. Like, the different, you know, volumes. I know volumes. Speaking of Spice and Wolf, though, the latest, the final volume of Spice and Wolf. Oh, my God. It finally came out. The final fucking volume. Came, oh, my God. I gotta read it. I gotta fucking read the entirety of the volume again. But, if you have not picked up Spice and Wolf and you haven't read it, all of the volumes of the light novel are finally out. All 17 are finally out translated by Yim Press, and uh, talking about the struggle here, back in 2009, 10, and 11, and I even think a little bit of 2012, there was a time when Yim Press would only release, like, maybe a volume or two of Spice and Wolf every fucking year, and it was so damn horrible, it's like every six months, one volume came out, and I mean, I eventually, I, I bought them all, but to be honest, I couldn't wait, and I had to read them. I had to find a place to read all of Spice and Wolf. I had to figure out where I could read it, because I could not wait. I love Spice and Wolf too much. But I did buy the volumes when they eventually came out, you know, in the States. But Yim Press was so fucking slow. I mean, two volumes a year, that's... Oh, no, not, when you're in a, into a good series, just face the facts here. When you're into a good series, and you know a bunch of content is out there for it, but it's not out in the States yet, like, translated by Yim Press, you're like, fuck, I'm like, I, just, I just gotta read it. I gotta fucking read it. And I, I had to read it. I had to read it. I bought them. I got all the volumes, but still... It, the struggle of Yim Press, of how slow they were in the past, was just terrible. It was so terrible. And now, knowing that they're releasing, like, three volumes a year, three to four volumes, like, they really started cranking out Spice and Wolf in the last couple of years. I, I will give them props on that. I mean, I remember when they were doing that, they were on volume seven or eight, and they were just cranking out two volumes a year, and it was just terrible. Now, they finished at Spice Wolf, and I think in about a year and a half, two years, and they released multiple volumes. So, I'm glad to see how Yim Press is on the ball releasing so many volumes at once now a year on multiple different series. I can't wait to see, you know, ReZero's volume finally come out, because I, I can't wait to read it, to see the entirety of the story in the perspective of uh, Subaru's mind, because you know they had to cut something out when it comes to, you know, light novel of ReZero. So, I can't wait to read that to see it from the perspective of, you know, Subaru and his mindset on what is going on. That's something I'm looking forward to. This, you know, I think it's coming out July or June, the actual first volume of the Light Novel by Yim Press. So, looking forward to reading that. But, anyways, thank you very much for the volumes of No Game to Life. I need to actually read these. I've only read volume one. I have not read volume two to four. I have not. I need to see when volume five is, comes out because obviously I gotta get it. I, I like No Game to Life. It needs a season two. It really does. I've been begging for it, but Madhouse sadly doesn't know how to make a season two. And if I had to place any bets when they're probably gonna make a season two for any series they've already done recently, it's probably gonna be One Punch Man. If I had to place any money, it would be One Punch Man. If not that, Hunter Hunter. It's one of those two series that are going to probably get a season two next. Now, Lord of Monogatari, it might, but it, it could possibly get a season two. But I believe after what happened with One Punch Man, how popular it got and all that, I believe One Punch Man will get a season two before any other series does. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I can't really see what Mad Owls would do next, but that's just my assumption after all the money, you know, One Punch Man made. Well, I expected this sooner or later, a new volume of High School DXD. I can't wait till, you know, season three finally comes out in the States, like the full BD for I can actually watch it and then do a review on it. Because that's what I said in the past. When the BD comes out in the States, season three, I can buy it. I'll buy it, I'll watch it, I'll do a review on it. But until then, I'm going to be waiting. But it's been a while since I've seen High School DXD or even thought about it. I can't believe, you know, Volume 8 is already out for this series. And sadly enough, there is no letter to who sent this, but the cheapest out there that's probably watched this video knows who sent it. And I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you so much for sending this. And also, this is going on the hentai shelf. Just saying. The Phantom of the Opera. I've heard a little bit about this movie, but I am never watched it. I heard it was a little bit good, but I don't know. I could be thinking of the wrong movie. Let me read this letter. Dear Chibi, first of all, how's your day going? Mine has been busy like it always is. I wrote to you before and sent you those Rave Master volumes. I had them extra and thought you would like them. Thank you so much. And it was a fun read, but anyways, I decided to write this to tell you a bit about myself. We are the same age, but I was born in November 95. I've been watching anime since I was 15. I started with Yu Yu Hakusho. Good start right there. And being an action-obsessed teen, I, tr I missed what's truly great about it. I watched many series I thought I would hate, 
but ended up becoming my favorites because of your reviews, such as my love story and ass class. <laughs> and I also want to thank you for introducing me to the right stuff. It's an awesome website with great deals, but back on topic, I'm glad your copyright, you know, debacle is solved for now. A lot of people were very supportive, which is admirable. Now, what I want to discuss is the fact that I want to start doing manga and anime discussions on my channel, and I wanted to get some advice from you on that. I wanted to ask some questions, unrelated. But I wanted to ask him uh, nonetheless. Number one, do you think Hiro Mashima has a foot fetish? I know some people like that, and they seem to think so. I think Hiro Mashima has more of a fan service fetish, or any type of, you know, I guess, fetish that's for the perverted mind. Because, I mean, dude, he has so many ass shots, boob shots, foot fetishes, and all sorts of shit going on. I mean, Hiro Mashima might as well draw something that's a harem. He, he really should. He really should just draw a hentai. I mean, some of his art and scenes and stuff he does is just ridiculous. Number two, do you think that Tokyo Ghoul should have a happy ending if it's done right and doesn't feel forced? I haven't read it yet, but just wondering. No, no. I, I think everybody should die. I, I really do. I, I believe everybody should die in Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, sorry, the end. Like, everybody dies, but end. Number three, have you seen the film Hollow Man? If you have, I have seen it. I like that movie. Now, I haven't seen it for years now. It's been like, oh, God. Eight, nine years, maybe ten years since I've seen it, but I saw it a very long time ago, and I enjoyed it. I didn't like Hollow Man 2 or whatever, if that's the same movie I'm thinking of. Hated that fucking movie. Let's see. If you haven't, I suggest you do it. It was a legitimate, creepy film involving invisibility. Number four. Now that you almost caught up to the manga, what are your favorite Gintama ships anyways? That's all for now. See you later, Space Cowboy. My favorite Gintama ships. Huh. I don't really have a favorite. I, I really don't. I mean, there's a lot of female characters I like and some great ships here and there, but I don't have a favorite ship. I, I don't. I I'll see how the series goes, and I've never really looked at, you know, Gintama as that. Like, you know, oh, this character should be with this character or not. It it's a different type of series. I've always looked at, you know, Gintama differently and haven't really decided on who should be with Gintoki yet. But maybe one day when we get towards closer towards the end, I will start thinking of it. I will probably have to very soon since the you know manga and anime will eventually end in the near future. So yeah, at this time, I don't really have a favorite ship for Gintama. Sincerely, Mr. Alucard Rules. P.S. Enjoy this movie. It's not as good as the book, but I still love it. So, Phantom of the Opera. I I've heard something about this. I heard it was good. I could be wrong. But I have heard this is a pretty damn good movie. I I've heard about it in the past when I was younger. I don't know how old this is, but I'm going to assume it's pretty damn old for a DVD and all that, widescreen and stuff. Even the casing and all that looks very old for today's standards. So, wait, does it... Oh, it has the recyclable type stuff. It might not be as old as I thought, or this might be a newer version. But, Phantom of the Opera. I've heard something about this. I, I wish I knew where I heard it from or what I know about it. I heard it's a good movie, though. So, I will have to see it very soon. Thank you so much. Oh, it's Yomushi Pedal! Oh my god, I need that I need that new season. I need that new season of Yomushi Pedal. Oh my god, I miss this series. My first sports anime. Such a cute little series. That's so cute too. That's that's so fucking cute. That, oh love it, so cute. And then we have ooh, cute little badges. A little pen. Oh, what is this? Look at this! Now this is cute right here. This is a blast from the past. Look at this. I don't know. Here, I'll hold this one first. Look at that. That's cute. That, that's cute as fuck. And then here's this one too. It's cute. So let's read this letter. Let's see what you said here. Hi, Chibi. How are you doing? I'm so excited to finally be able to write to you. So I hope this letter arrives safely. Also, funny thing that happened before I wrote this was I was in the middle of a major search to find some paper. I'm in the middle of uh, packing to move to my new place, and yikes! I packed all my notebook paper away, so uh, my computer paper works. Lol. Oh, so you're moving. Hopefully you move to a very good place. Anyways, I guess it's time to introduce myself, right? My name is Danielle, but if you ever see someone in the comments by the name of Asapun, I, I, I think that's what, the, how I read that, recently changed it to Asudoki, oh, okay, or on, uh, over on Twitter with the username Abiru, okay, that's me. Hi, I became a Chibit during the spring slash summer 2014 anime season during the time Alden Noah Zero Season 1 and the masterpiece Tokyo Ghoul aired. I found your channel after wanting to see what everyone thought about the TG anime. The moment I seen this person in hyper mode in the video by the name of Chibi, then I knew I was going to enjoy other future videos to come. 
Boy, it was like an instant light hit me at the end of the tunnel. I really am proud to say that you are one of my favorite YouTubers next to Sun Wukong. He's badass too. You need to watch his Tokyo Go Live reactions. He does some pretty damn good stuff. If Chibits, if you haven't seen Sun Wukong, I recommend you go see him. Each day of the week, I always look forward to your reviews and live reactions. I always jokingly say you and Sun's reactions give me life, lol. Now moving on, the topic of anime. My all-time favorite animes are Full Metal Alchemist, Black Butler, Fruit Basket, DNA, DN Angel, and 90% of all the sports anime I've seen personal faves at the moment is Haikyuu, and recently Hunter x Hunter. While my favorite manga series are Fruits Basket, Tokyo Ghoul just to name a few, I want to tell you that I never fought in this world that I would fall madly in love with Hunter x Hunter. It was always that one series I would avoid for a silly reason, after the motivation and encouragement by a close friend who said, you gotta watch it, there's this guy that you will go crazy for, I finally took the time to watch 2-3 to three episodes which led me to binge watching the whole series within a month, and my whole world changed. Hunter x Hunter is a good series. That guy my friend referred to is Kurapika, who is my number one favorite character next to Killua and Aruka, Liorio and Hisoka. Kurapika as a character from personality, and ability, and as a whole character who really made one of the hugest impacts on me, overall the series is truly amazing and I'm so happy I took the chance to watch it, even going through major withdrawals after completing it. Not to worry, I'm uh, now I'm reading the series weekly. That Dark Continent arc is going to be amazing, plus so happy to see Kurapika. And Leorio gets some focus. Togashi, it's been so long, I agree. It's been way too long since Leorio got some focus. Now, if you don't mind me asking you a few questions from a Hunter Hunter corner. Number one, who is your favorite characters? Who are your favorite characters? Okay, so my favorite characters, Merlom and Netro and Gon and Pito. The, the, instantly, some of my favorite. Hisuka too. Hisuka is one of my personal favorites too. But talking about things that instantly come to mind, Merlom, I believe, is one of my personal favorites favorite characters. The way he was written, he was the main character of the Chimera Ant arc. It wasn't Gon. It, it was not Netro. It was not any other character. It was not from the main true, the main cast. Merlom was the main character of that arc, and the development he got from start to finish was something I have never seen from a fucking series. It was just mind-blowing. It was too mind-blowing for me seeing someone that was just a monster that would eat humans, eat children. Like, we saw examples of this. And then he was this bad guy and then turned into something that wasn't evil anymore. He was actually a genuinely good guy. I mean, after fighting Natro, the meaning of that fight with Natro, to Komugi and, you know, Merom getting together, how, you know, they had this, like, Beauty and the Beast type love relationship going on. It was just so beautiful. So such a well-written arc overall, not just Merrill in general, but such a well-written arc. But the way Merrill was, the way his character went out, the way he died, his morals, the meaning of him and all that, just one of the best characters I have ever seen in literature, hands down. I mean, he is a really fucking good character. And then another character, Netro too. The reason why I like Netro so much is not the point of him just being badass and being OP just like Merrill, but it was also because his standpoint and some mystery about him. Like, you know, how he was almost driven to the point of insanity and he trained himself for all those years and doing the prayer. And then also how he says, you think I, can, I need, you know, both arms to pray. And then as he did, you know, his zero hand. Or when he stopped the bleeding, when he, you know, hit his leg and all that and it curled up. It was just, it was so badass. His willpower was ridiculous and then when he finally said those lines at the end when he died and he punctured his heart and all that he was like I have you in checkmate pretty much and that that was GG for Merrill so I mean Natro's character too the meaning by that it, it's kind of similar to how I feel about Merrill in a way because the way he stood he supported Merrill and then another character Pito wasn't as developed as Merrill or Netro, but I like Pito's overall involvement in the Chimera Ant arc. I mean, Pito was a really good critical moment that really boosted Gon as a character, in my opinion. I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of Gon in the earlier parts of Hunter Hunter. I mean, I liked him as a character. I, no, don't get me wrong. I liked him, but he wasn't a very good character, in my opinion. Like, I didn't enjoy him. Like, I didn't think he was the best. There, I like Kill over him. And after seeing Gon in the Chimera Ant arc, and how he went in rage mode, and how he broke down, and then attacked Pito, and just beat the fucking shit out of Pito to the point to where there was nothing left, it was something i just never seen from a shonen. It was so damn dark. Like, it was ridiculously dark. 
It was nothing you would see a main character ever do in a shonen. It was something you would never see. Ichigo wouldn't do that. Naruto wouldn't fucking do that. You have it to where Goku wouldn't do that. You have it to where other different shonen MCs would not do that. Izuku would not even do that type of shit. So, I mean, there's just so many characters out there from shonen you would not see do something like that to that extent. Just pummeling someone's fucking face until they're already dead and continuously hitting that damn fucking body. That was ridiculous. That was just cold blood murder. That, that, that's what it was. So yeah, Golan as a character moved up in my ranking after that. So there's your first question. Number two, what type of nin user would you be? I'd like to be a specialist. That, that's what I would like to be. If you could partner up with anyone to go on a journey or to train with him, who would it be? Oh, easy, easy, easy. i probably do Netro. I, I, you'd probably think I would say Meron, but... If I factor in personalities and shit, Marilyn would just be evil, no way. So, I'd probably do, yeah, I would definitely do Netra. I, I would like to see his training, you know, do the prayer and stuff and become ridiculous over time. I would love to train underneath Netra. Let's see. Curious question. Do you think Kurapika will serve, uh, survive being at the Dark Continent? For me, I'm still afraid for his safety. Like, with the limitations he set to his chains, the four prints in his nature, and he finds out about his clan's eyes, oh, it's game over, cries. Yep, it's GG if, you know, he finds out about his clan's eyes being there. It's GG. Number five, last question. Who would be your favorite Zoldic family member? I'm a huge fangirl of all the members, and they are amazing. Ah. Killa. Killa is easily one of my favorite members of the Zoldic family. Time to end the letter before it gets too long. I really feel accomplished to write to you. I'm working on a package to send to you, so look out for it. Thank you for being an amazing person. Seriously, you always bring sunshine to a lot of people, including myself. Continue to work hard, but you need to rest sometimes for yourself, too. As with this letter, I want you to give to you the following two character straps of Kagami and Ashia from uh, da Danton. A series I was so excited you got finally to watch in fall 2014 season. A keychain of Naru uh, Ruko from Yolomushi Pedal. He's one of my favorite characters next to Monami. And a pin of all my favorite characters from Kuroko no Basket. Until next time, continue to stay awesome. Forever a loyal Chibit. Let's be friends, okay? We're all friends here. Or family, actually. Daniel, YouTube, Aso Do uh, Doki, and Scarlet Alchemist 17. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a sweet letter. It's always fun reading letters, getting to see what you guys say. It's the highlight of my week, honestly. It's, this is some of my favorite times to do, is definitely reading letters. My favorite part about each week is not actually watching anime, seriously. My favorite part about each individual week is actually sitting down and reading all of these letters. It, it really is my favorite part of the week. Seeing what you all say, the support and all that, it's something I truly enjoy. And... It's something I cherish a lot when I'm sitting here doing the video. When the video finally ends, it makes me sad because I know I need to wait till next week. But, I mean, still, the wait is worth it. And it's just always fun seeing letters from you guys always popping up in the mailbox, P.O. box and stuff. And just reading it and all that. Thank you so much. This right here, this is going on my fridge. This is going on my fucking fridge right here. This is a crowning achievement. Me, me right here building a sandcastle. Oh, I made a fucking comment about buildings. Oh my god, it just dawned on me. I made a comment, I think, in the Q&A about me liking building sandcastles. One of my favorite things to do. Right here. Like it, right... Oh, that's so cute. That That's really fucking cute. Thank you so much, Austin, for that. That's badass. That That's cute. Let's read this letter here. Dear Chibi, hello, it is I again, Austin. How you doing, bro? And yes, I'm doing great, and I hope you will be too in the near future. I hope you love this drawing I did for- I love it. I, the, the first one I did, I messed up because of my ITS and had to redraw it. I then decided to draw it using two-point perspective, and I have to say, it was a pain in the ass, but I got it done. And again, I'm sorry that the lines aren't straight- Stop it. I have to say, drawing the straight lines are a pain in the ass. I'm using the G, mostly commonly used one, and Maru small pens to draw. I can't use a ruler to draw the lines because it was smear. I can use other markers, but they will fade when I erase it. Okay, now to stop ranting about it and get to the next paragraph. I highly recommend you read comic books. Before I got into comic books, I was just a manga person because it's better and here's the reason. American comic books have teams to come up with a story and a different people to draw and color them. One for story, penciling, and coloring, and that's the other difference because they're all in color except The Walking Dead. And there are many people that do different stories for just one character, unlike manga. 
where you only have the offer to do the story with some help from the editor if needed. And if you were to be published by a company like Marvel or DC, they won't let you do your own story. They will uh, sculpture it to fit your character into the universe. However, I know this is at my job we had to remodel and a security guard was a comic book nerd musician with his own band he had a friend who got published and they said no to basically his whole idea he had and it crushed him while in manga you have the freedom to do whatever you want to do so a lot of people are indie so they can publish independently so no one can interfere with their dream as you know manga is read from right to the left and comic books are read from right to left in the dc and marvel universe there is an established multi-universe of the stories very and you don't know where you are the main community universe is uh is earth 616 our universe also the characters are heavily outlined the speech bubbles are always pointed to the characters in the different colors i could go on and on and the thing is to know is that the dccu and the mcu are different universes from r616 yeah they don't follow the comics i think i covered the basics between american comics and manga i'm subscribed to a few youtubers that help and explain them my number one pick is comic Stor uh, stormian who reads him and reads it back to you. Another one is Comic Explained, who dives deeper into comics, uh, dives deeper into comic books, and explains very deep into details about why the creatures did this and that and a lot of stuff. It was thanks to them, it was how I knew the characters. I have many favorite comics. One is Green Lantern's Bright Day and The Darkest Night, two different books. I could go on and on, but I've taken up much of your time already. In the spare time, of course, please check them out if you want to and see if you want to do it yourself. Lastly, I will try my best to remember all the manga I've read and that you should check out, or if you read it, then that's all right. Your fellow Chibit, Austin. Thank you so much, bro. Here's the list of the manga I have read so far. Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, Berserk, good man, Berserk. Fairy Tale, Tough, very good and awesome art. Attack on Titan, Freezing, One Punch Man, Slash One, Dead Man Wonderland, Royal Rumble, so awesome, 10 out of 10. Let's see, High School of the Dead, Wish It Would Come Back, a History to Strongest Disciple, Kenichi, Very Echi, Hitman Reborn, Tokyo Ghoul, Slash Re. Uh, Gantz, very awesome, a lot of nudity and very awesome story. Vagabond, Ubel Blatt, please read it, it's very awesome. Area D, please get to this as soon as possible, very awesome. Zetman, words can't describe how awesome the series is, it also has an anime, but it's different. Sunken, a very good series right there. Sunken Rock, June Record of the Last Hero, Dan Aki, forgot where I left off of. Gintama, forgot where I left off of. Blue Exorcist, and My Hero Academia. And that's all I can remember for now. Yeah, I know it's a short one, but if any more come to mind, I'll mail another one. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you. And with that, I think it's a perfect time to end this weekly chibi vlog. So, I want to say I'll see you all again next week for opening up more fan letters and stuff. Getting to see what you guys say and all that. And you have one of the best times of the week. And just thank you so much. And you know, one thing I want to actually answer, because some Chibits have been asking for a while now, and I want to clarify this. Some Chibits have been asking, Chibi, how do I send you stuff? Like, I, I don't know how. Like, some have asked me constantly. And some of you might be unaware, but in my description on all my videos, all my videos, in the description, there is my P.O. Box. You, you can see it down below. It's by, underneath the video in the description. And if you want to send a letter or something, there it is. Many Cheapets have asked me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube constantly, like, what's your address? There you go. It, it's right there in the comments below. Or not the comments. It's in the description. Whoa, sorry. It's, it's pretty damn late. I think it's like 2 to 3 in the morning right now. So, yeah, it's very fucking late. But anyways, yeah. If you're interested and if you do want to send a letter and you've been wondering, it's in the description. So, Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I love reading your letters. It means a lot to me, and I love you all. Please be safe. Chibi out.